This is the Keychron K5 SE, an ultra-slim wireless mechanical keyboard that packs a full 100% layout from escape key to numpad in a surprisingly thin package. As someone who regularly jumps back and forth between membrane and mechanical keyboards, I think this is a really neat device, and a segment of the market that's rapidly growing in popularity as low-profile keyboards and larger layouts are beginning to appear from more and more manufacturers. If you want to get into custom mechanical keyboards, but have a fondness for the thin feel of laptop typing, this might be the right segment for you. In the interest of full disclosure, Keychron Canada was kind enough to send this keyboard to me at my request, but as always, they had no oversight or input on this video, and I'll do my best to share my honest perspective on what's good and not so good about the K5 SE. With that said, let's get started. The Keychron K5 SE can be purchased directly through the Keychron website using the links that I'll share in the description below. If you happen to be ordering from Keychron Canada, I also have an affiliate code that will save you 5% on your purchase. By default, the K5 SE comes with Keychron standard two-tone shine through gray keycaps with orange accents for the escape and backlight effects key. You can choose between two backlight options, white for 132 Canadian or 94 USD, or RGB for 145 Canadian or 104 US. You also have the choice between either Gateron low profile switches in linear reds, tactile browns, or clicky blues, or you can opt for Keychron's own optical switches, which come in the same three standard options, as well as either banana or mint early bump tactile versions. Here's a quick demo of what each sounds like. To me, the Gateron Low Profile Blue Switch stands out as the most clicky, while the linear reds are quite comparable, and I find the tactile optical switches to be a little more scratchy than the Gateron Browns. Keychron also offers two more linear white and black optical switches with lighter and heavier activation forces, as well as a heavier orange clicky option, though these versions aren't yet available for pre-configuration on the K5 SE and have to be purchased separately. The optical switches are only available as hot swappable and cost the same as the Gateron integrated switches, but you can get Gaterons in hot swappable configurations as well, though it'll cost you an extra $14 Canadian or 10 USD. It's worth noting that the PCB for the optical and Gateron switches aren't interchangeable, so you'll want to pick one system then stick with it. Beyond this, Keychron also offers upgradable double-shot PVT keycaps in either white or black, which come in 118 key sets. For my K5 SE, I opted for the RGB backlight with optical hot swappable brown switches, as well as a secondary set of linear white switches, which I use for the letters, numpad, and arrow keys, as well as a set of white PVT keycaps for all of my perimeter keys. Fair warning, I've found that the white linear switch's low 30 gram activation force is very sensitive for regular typing, which has led to more errors, at least while I was getting used to them. With that said, here's what my setup sounds like. As I mentioned before, the Keychron K5 SE is a full 100% 104 key keyboard, including broken up function key rows that allow for easier referencing, as well as a standalone arrow key cluster, and a full numpad with large plus, enter, and zero keys. While I like the compact 75 and 85% layouts as well, for me, it's hard to beat a full keyboard for productivity work if you have the desk space to accommodate it. 
Taking things apart, we see that the K5SE is constructed with an aluminum top case and ABS plastic base that's reinforced with a thin galvanized steel sheet, giving the keyboard a relatively light 670 gram weight, but nice rigid construction. The PCB is directly mounted to the case back via ABS standoffs, but otherwise there's nothing too fancy going on inside the keyboard, where clearly the emphasis is on keeping it as thin as possible, which they've certainly achieved. The K5SE measures in at 435 millimeters in width, 120 millimeters in depth, and angles up from 17 to 22 millimeters in height from the front to back row of keys. By default, the keyboard has a slightly angled profile at about three degrees, though there are a pair of collapsible kickstand legs embedded into the ABS back, which can orient the keyboard at either six or nine degree angles. Speaking of profiles, both the ABS Shine Through and Double Shot PBT keycaps have an angled staircase-like profile that leans away from the user unless you're working in one of the more angled orientations. The default ABS keycaps are smaller overall, providing more room for the backlight to glow around the edges and have a square shape that's concave moving from left to right. These generally feel nice and smooth, but not quite as solid as the PBT keycaps and definitely show more grease marks from finger contact. Alternatively, the double shot PBT keycaps have a concave spherical profile and are drafted away from the touch points to reduce the gap between keys. This is good for preventing large debris from getting caught in the keyboard, but has the unfortunate consequence of practically eliminating the backlight unless you're working in a very dim setting, which is why I've opted to use a combination of both keycap types. Whichever you opt for, the Keychron keycaps all use Cherry Style MX stems, though Keychron has introduced offset stabilizers on most of their longer keys to help reduce key wobble, which means that finding third-party keycaps, which is already very limited for low-profile keyboards, may be quite challenging, at least for these keys, as most manufacturers opt for inline stabilizers. Moving around to the backside of the K5SE, we see that there's a centrally located USB-C charging port that allows you to use the keyboard in a wired mode if you're looking to reduce the input latency. The K5SE supports multi-device Bluetooth 5.1 connections, which can be triggered by flipping the keyboard's back left toggle into Bluetooth mode, then holding down on the function key and pressing 1, 2, or 3. But unlike many other manufacturers, Keychron doesn't offer a radio frequency connection dongle. As always, the Bluetooth connection has a worse polling rate than the wired mode, coming in at 90Hz versus 1000Hz. So, while it's perfectly fine for productivity work, you'll want to use the wired connection if you're doing any PC gaming. The only other switch on the K5SE is the back-left toggle between Windows and Mac modes, the result of which can be seen on the LED cluster above the numpad, which also displays num and cap locks. Aside from this, the only other indicators on the keyboard are the small Bluetooth LED that flashes blue when it's searching for a connection, as well as the perhaps excessively bright red LED that's illuminated when charging or flashes when the battery level dips below 30%. It's also worth noting that to the right side of the standard function keys are dedicated screen capture, voice assistant, and backlighting effects keys, all of which I've really come to appreciate in my time using this keyboard. All things considered, I think the K5SE is a really well-constructed keyboard that strikes a nice balance between a premium-feeling aluminum construction and a lightweight but functional design. The Keychron K5SE is available with either white or RGB backlight, either being powered by north-facing LEDs. I opted for the RGB version, so keep in mind that some of what comes next will only be relevant to the RGB version. In the Keychron way, switching between the 18 backlight modes available on the K5SE can be triggered using the backlight effects button. This sequentially toggles you through all of the different modes that have been curated for the keyboard, including the basics like fully lit, reactive, and rotating key illumination effects, as well as many more. So if you're looking to add a splash of excitement to your desk, I suspect you'll find something here that you like. You also have the ability to increase or decrease the backlight brightness between four levels as well as fully off, 
using the F5 and F6 keys, as well as the ability to increase and decrease the speed of dynamic backlighting effects by holding down on the function and pressing either the plus or minus buttons. Additionally, for RGB configurations, you can toggle most of the effects to run in one of nine color modes by holding down function and pressing either the left or right arrow keys. Finally, you can lock and unlock backlighting effects by pressing function, the backlighting effects key, and L simultaneously, in case you're afraid of accidentally altering the backlight unintentionally. The only cons I've noted with the backlight on the K5SE are that the max brightness isn't really all that bright. The keyboard doesn't support true customization by way of QMK and VIA, and that you can't move forward or back through the lighting effects, which means if you overshoot the effect you want, you have to run through them all again to try to find it. Overall though, for an entry-level keyboard, the Keychron K5SE provides more backlight tuning than I was expecting, and I think it'll satisfy most users. The battery might be a serious tipping point for some people looking at the Keychron K5SE. At only 2000 milliamp hours, the lithium polymer battery that powers this keyboard is respectable, but not large. Keychron estimates that the battery will last 90 hours if you don't have the backlight enabled, or 30 hours if it's turned on and at its lowest brightness. I guess we understand now why you can't get too carried away with the max brightness. Having said that, my biggest frustration with the battery on the K5SE isn't its capacity, but simply that it isn't very clear how much battery you have left at any point in time. Unlike most other peripherals I've used, the K5SE doesn't communicate its battery level to the device that it's connected to. So if you look at the device under Apple's Bluetooth settings, there's no indication of how charged the keyboard is. By pressing function and B, the backlight will shine either green or blue, depending on whether the keyboard is above 70% charged or between 70 and 30%, but that's a rather coarse measurement, which I don't find particularly helpful. As I mentioned before, the charging LED will flash red if the battery drops below 30%, but I would much prefer a quick check similar to how ASIO does it, where a key press combination illuminates the number keys to ballpark your battery life within 10% intervals. That said, Keychron has implemented a 10 minute timeout that powers down the keyboard to the point of disconnecting all Bluetooth connections, which I think does a pretty good job of helping to stretch the battery life in practical use. Though it means you'll have to wait for about two seconds while the keyboard reconnects to your computer once it wakes. This happens fairly quick. I suspect this power save mode is why I've been able to get through most of my full work week with about six hours of keyboard use per day and the backlight set at full brightness. All things considered, I'm quite happy with the Keychron K5 SE. Competition in the larger layout, low profile mechanical keyboard space is starting to heat up, but I suspect that the K5 SE will remain a solid choice for years to come because it offers a good amount of customizability and is pretty well built. My favorite thing about the K5 SE is probably just how compact it is, not just thickness wise, but also in footprint. When you use the wider PBT keycaps, the already minimal bezel bordering the keys almost completely disappears, leaving a very clean and minimalistic aesthetic. If you're interested in purchasing a Keychron K5 SE, I'll leave my affiliate link in the description, as well as a 5% coupon code for those who are purchasing at keychron.ca. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.